first views of Siberia. Ooh. Crazy place, I can't believe we're here. It's gonna be crazy. Morning world, welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We are here. Oh, where's the motorcycle? Here, here. <laughs> We're here in the city of Vladivostok in the far east of Russia and today we're gonna collect our motorcycle bumblebee. So we arrived here a few days ago and yesterday we spent the entire day with our wonderful customs agent Yuri going from office to office with paperwork, with inspections, with basically everything that needs to happen to release bumblebee out of customs and onto the streets of Russia. We uh, were running around yesterday in the city as well to get a SIM card, to get some money exchanged because our credit cards are not working at the moment here <laughs> no nope. visa doesn't work mastercard doesn't work no. <laughs> nothing works just cash only yes. oh look siberian tiger <laughs> Hello. actually interestingly enough this area is the only region in the world where the siberian tiger lives so this state primorsky Krai, i think it's pronounced is the home of the siberian tiger fingers crossed we see one of those on the way please 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 but yuri also basically taught us around the city took us to like a local place for lunch it was super super tasty so now it is day two of our customs adventure here and uh, we're heading down to the port now to meet yuri and i think everything is done So interestingly, this spot where we are right now, crossing over the train track, is actually the very beginning of the Trans-Siberian Railway. From there, this railway goes all the way to Moscow. How crazy is that? So we just met up with Yuri and Look what he has for us. <laughs> ah, the paper of dreams. Temporary import permit <laughs> is done. All we have to do now is go and pick up Bumblebee. Yoo! Our first views of Bumblebee. Ooh. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. There she is. All right. Sasiva, thank you. Oh yes, here we go. You on the streets of Vladivostok. Oh, that's so good. Wow, what an amazing feeling. So we are just following Yuri at the moment to our hotel to pick up our bags. Oh my God, this is a nice feeling. So good, hey? <sighs> Yeah, it was super easy actually. As soon as Yuri was ready with all the paperwork, he gave us a call, we came down. I had to sign one or two things. I had to pay the money for the storage of Bumblebee. I had to pay Yuri and the company and for everything in the customs clearance. And that's it, we are free. Yeah, Yuri is so experienced. I mean, he does his job since 30 years or something and he already got some good bikes from like huge adventurers into Russia <laughs> which is really cool yeah basically anybody who has motorcycled or overlanded in any way through Vladivostok has been helped by Yuri he has shipped bikes and cars and vans all over the world from Vladivostok so he is just the expert in customs clearance, the expert in shipping out of here. Hi guys, Editing Ollie here. At this point, we just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who donated to our GoFundMe page to help us pay for the astronomical cost of flying Bumblebee to Korea and then shipping on the ferry to Russia. We couldn't have done it without you guys. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is how much everything cost in the end. 
So in total, £6,921. So the GoFundMe page is still open. So if you'd like to contribute, I've put a link in the video description below. Thanks everyone, now back to the video. And here we are, right in the center of Vladivostok. Look at this. Beautiful. I'm so impressed with this building and the architecture here. It looks so nice. Yeah, they call Vladivostok the Europe of the Far East. <laughs> and you can see why. I mean, look at the buildings. These yeah. like 18th century buildings. Really pretty. Yeah, really, really beautiful place. Yeah. Also, just can't believe how like welcoming and nice people are here. Like on the ferry from South Korea here to Russia, we have spoken to so many people and everyone was like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy that you come here and uh, that you visit Russia and yeah, everyone was so friendly. Yeah, even at the hostel where we stayed for the last two nights, you know, we're just sitting there eating breakfast and this guy from Moscow next to us just says, it's so nice to see you here. Welcome to Russia. It's just, I've heard welcome to Russia now about 10 times since we've arrived. Welcome to Russia. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so nice. So yeah, but we have a crazy journey ahead. Oh my God. We just rooted today like where we want to be in the next few days and it looks mad really we have an amazing amazing adventure ahead but for today uh, we're not going to be heading very far we're going to be staying with a biker who was introduced to us through Kinga on her bike who we met at the Overland Expo Oi, cheers. she gave us the contact of Sergei who lives here and um, we're gonna go and stay with him tonight he lives only I think maybe 10 15 kilometers out of the north side of Vladivostok so once we've gone back to the hotel pack up Bumblebee ready to go then we'll head over to his place yeah I'm excited and then tomorrow we can hit the roads of Siberia properly and make some real distance into Russia So this is the hotel we've been staying at for the last two nights. Capsule Hotels, it's called Deep Hotel. We have to load up Bumblebee. Let's go here, hey? Okay. Just so I'm completely out the way of like all the cars. Okay, okay. Is that all right? People yeah, can that's still right. get through, yeah, hey? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get Bumblebee ready then, ready for the road. Yes, woohoo! Thank you so much, Yuri, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> really nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yuri. I'm sure we will call you on the next border. Yuri, please help us. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. See you. <laughs> he needs to help us with everything along the way. Everything. Oh my God. Can we even survive without Yuri? <laughs> Here, a sticker. A sticker that you can put like on somewhere. That's you? Yeah. Okay, I just get our stuff. So this is where we've been staying for the past two nights. Deep Capsule Hotel. And I, I can't go in this area because I can't be wearing the boots. Like they actually have these little slippers that they give you to go in this area. But I can peep my head in. Look, look, look. This is where we stayed for the last two nights. So all of the beds are just like in little compartments. Now we actually had a room here, but even the room are just these little boxes over here. They're absolutely tiny, like it's just you open the door and it's just a bed and that's it. But it was one of the cheapest rooms in town, so it works. And it's super clean and nice. Look at this, it's like three years old, they said. And they did a really, really nice breakfast. <laughs> Sweet. All right, we're all loaded up and ready to go. Look at this. Whew. I can't believe how ready we are. <laughs> See you. So we just routed over to um, Sergei's house and even though it's only 14 kilometers it says it's going to take us 54 minutes to get there and Yuri told us he was like oh oh his house is very far very far I was like it's 15 kilometers he's like very far very far <laughs> I think there's a lot of traffic on the way hey didn't fall over the first maneuver Okay. Ready to hit the road? Totally ready. Okay. I'm so ready. I Let's think go. I was never that ready. That yeah. sounds ready. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Just like that, Canada, Korea, 
<laughs> Russia. <laughs> yeah. Mama, Papa, we are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we said in Korea that we were like on the home continent, but now is different because now we don't have to do anything except ride over this massive landmass of Eurasia now. This is like, we just have to ride through that and we are back in Europe. But on the other side, we actually checked yesterday how to cross the Caspian Sea and maybe there's still a flight involved. But this is something we will talk about it closer to the time. Yeah, That's like the last challenge of coming into Europe. But anyway, yeah, like you said, let's not worry about it for now because let's just focus on this success. The fact that we were in Canada a couple of weeks ago. We flew the bike to freaking Korea. We rode across Korea without the correct permit, but we didn't mind because it happened anyway. And then we got on a ferry and brought up and Bumblebee all the way past North Korea which by the way I checked on the news yesterday and apparently North Korea launched a ballistic missile into the East Sea literally one day after we passed the North Korean coast on the East Sea so we were literally where they just fired a ballistic missile which I just thought was pretty crazy so I thought I'd tell you guys I didn't really want to know that before we got on that ferry but yeah now we are here, we are on the Russian mainland. In the traffic jam. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are in the world, there is always a traffic jam waiting for you. <laughs> Look here, Siberian tiger again. Second Siberian tiger of the day. I mean, it's so cool that they actually have tigers in the wild in this area. It's unbelievable. Yuri told us that actually Siberian tigers sometimes even come to the outskirts of the north of the city. Like they've actually been spotted coming close to the city of Vladivostok. And it's a really nice story actually because conservation efforts have meant that the population of Siberian tigers is steadily increasing. I think they said there were roughly maybe 500 of them at the moment in the wild estimation and their range is so cool their range is basically across our first couple of days of riding like that's the siberian tiger range all the way to the city of Khabarovsk, which we'll be getting to tomorrow if everything goes well which is so cool because although we probably won't see one it's nice to know that along that road as we ride down it there's tigers in the woods. They're just there, yeah. Literally tigers and leopards yeah. and bears. It's pretty cool. I'm really, really, really happy to be getting out of Vladivostok to be making our way into the mainland of Siberia. Yeah. a beautiful place here really yeah look at these buildings wow amazing so this city was actually founded in 1860 it was originally founded as a russian military outpost and most of this center here dates to the early 19th century we're coming right through the center now cool incredible look at this church yeah so this is the main square of the city right here and this church here in front of us it looks like it's really old but actually yuri told us that it was about 10 years old and it's not actually even finished it's not even open yet so the population of Vladivostok is now 600,000. It's the largest city in the state, Primorsky Krai, but it's the second largest city in the Russian Far East behind Havarosk, which we'll be going to tomorrow if it all goes well. And so, like I said, originally it was built as a Russian military outpost, but it actually remains the main Russian seaport of the Pacific. But Vladivostok also has become known as the cultural, touristic, scientific center of the Russian Far East. And uh, it's a pretty touristic place, actually. It was visited by three million people in 2017. Not so many people have visited it recently. Actually, we haven't seen like, any other tourists since we've arrived. Yuri told us we are the first motorcycle since Covid that he's actually brought into the country. <laughs> So 
So the city, as you can maybe just about see over there in the background, the city is located around a bay called the Golden Horn Bay. That's on the Sea of Japan. The first settlement here was actually recorded in 600 AD and it was originally a Chinese settlement. But then there was a treaty called the, I think it was called the Peking Treaty, the Treaty of Peking. That was in 1860. At that time, this whole area was ceded to Russia and Vladivostok was born. Vladivostok means the Lord of the East. Oh wow, well, look at the price of fuel here. 95 octane is 53 rubles and it's actually quite convenient because rubles to the pound is pretty much exactly 100 to 1. Sweetheart, but did you see 100 octane was there? No. Yes? I don't know what that really means, 100 octane. Yeah, it must be 100 octane. Is that really a thing? Apparently it's a thing here. I never ever in my life saw anything like it. And uh, did you see the price? It was like 69 pence. 69 pence per litre. <laughs> 100 octane. Anyway, it looks like fuel will be pretty cheap. Yeah. Uh, which is good because we have a lot of miles oh, on this yes. next leg. Tell you more about that tomorrow when I show you guys the map of where we're going to be headed. But I can tell you there are thousands of miles of Siberia ahead. Okay, maybe stay behind the police. Yeah, yeah. I do not want to be no. messing with the police. No. All right, we can probably turn our camera off anyway as okay. well. One super, super funny thing. Look at this car next to us. You notice anything unusual? So here they drive on the right, but the cars that they import from Japan, well, Japan drives on the left. So the steering wheel is on the right of the car. So basically they drive on the right with a right hand side drive. <laughs> so the whole of Vladivostok is actually mi mixed up. Yeah, basically all the cars imported from Korea is on one side and all the cars imported from Japan are on the other side. <laughs> I mean, look at the cars around here. Toyota, Toyota, Toyota there. Everything's Toyota. Everything. Oh wow, look at this police car. I'm trying not to point the camera at them really obviously. I really yeah. want to be super careful about it, but that's that's a pretty cool looking police truck, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it looks really, really vintage. Really vintage. Hey look at that, GS. <laughs> That's not Sergey, is it, do you think? He doesn't have a GS, does he? I don't know. Maybe it is him. Do you think it is him? I'm unsure. <laughs> I'm unsure too. <laughs> I mean, we're very close to his place. Yeah. It might be him. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it okay! Is <laughs> it is Sergey. Yes! Okay, we follow him. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> uh, his top says follow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, down here. Yeah, wow, look at this condos. Yeah, this is where he lives, hey? So many apartments. So many apartments, it's crazy. Oh, look at those doggies playing in the mud. Oh, this is like a maze. Okay, I would jump off, I think. Yep. Yes. Привет, привет. Как дела? Отлично. Хорошо. Motorcycle here. We have uh, a park, uh, no, no park. Okay. Now we can take uh, your biggest. Ah. Okay. I'm <laughs> so happy. Motorbike here. We see you. Oh, so good. This is your motorcycle? Yes. BMW RS yes. 1200. Amazing. Uh -huh.
It's a big bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, it's falling? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Our bike fall many times. Good. 40 times. <laughs> Good evening, guys. We made it. Have been alive. Yes, yeah, Sergey's just gone to drop his bike off at his work, I think. This is his flat. Look at this place. So he's given us the bed for the night. And we just went to the supermarket and got some supplies because we're gonna be cooking dinner for him. Yes, we bought actually some traditional dumplings, but I would just create like a kind of a tomato sauce with it. So I don't really know if this is like traditional or it will be absolutely delicious. So Sergey has his apartment on the 10th floor. Look at this. And this apartment block has 22 stories, so it's absolutely crazy. It's just really cool that we arrive here in Vladivostok and then already we're on the road with another biker, staying with a local biker, and that's super cool. Thank you so much, Sergey. Right, we better get dinner ready because yeah. he's gonna be back and I'm really hungry. Yes, and that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time.